Welcome back to Lahuj Yanks. We have a new at Lahuj Yanks. We're talking about Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Today, we're going to be reacting to a video request from a uh, subscriber by the name of BCR. So I'm going to shout you out in a second. I'm going to read out if you're, your comment, if you're watching this. But basically, BCR requested I do a video on multinational or mainly dual national between England and Canada. Daniel Jepson, he's been getting a lot of press from the Canadian media lately and a lot of coverage as potentially he could be Canada's next rising star should he choose Canada but although he's currently playing with England under 19 team so it's still up in the air but um yeah before we go any further I did I do want to read out BCR's uh, comment in his video request and I want to shout him out because I mean he gave me a great video to react to I think and a great topic I should say and he comes in on the Marcelo Flores video by the way I also cover uh, that's another dual national or multinational uh, Marcelo Flores video if you haven't seen that one it's got a lot of, it seemed like it's created a lot of controversy when I did that one. As it seems to be my most disliked video, but I don't, I, I don't know what you can do about that. And I just react to it and people just give their opinions. So take it as you will. But anyway, the Marcelo Flores video, um, Marcelo Flores, you know, a lot of, you know, Mexican press really say that Canada's going to steal him. Although many Mexicans and Mexican press saying he is Mexican and he will most likely choose the Mexican national team. And if he does, I mean, it's not going to hurt because, I mean, I don't know, because he was already leaning towards the Mexican national team anyway. But um, basically, he was he's eligible for Canada, Mexico, and even England because his mother was born in England. But the main candidates for him are Mexico and Canada. England is really out of the picture in terms of him. But just like on that video, we have another multi or three-nation, um, tri-nation um, guy to react to. So Daniel Jepson, but before you do that, I'm going to go ahead and read. BCR's comment. It's a great video. I'm hoping Marcelo Flores chooses Canada. I was hoping and wondering if you could do a video on budding superstar Daniel Jepson possibly choosing to play for La Rouge as well. Thank you. And yeah, so without further ado, here we are. We're going to be talking about Daniel Jepson. Who is he? What nations are he eligible? Which I said, but I'll, re I'll happily repeat. And just let's get to know this guy. He was born in Canada after all, but he is eligible for Canada. Um, England and Jamaica, although I don't really know if Jamaica is considering. So just like Marcelo Flores, mainly I think it's going to be between Canada and England. So it's only two nations, particularly even the new, uh, Canadian press is saying it's um, dual national instead of tri-national because Jamaica is really not in the picture here. But then again, I also talked to another part of Jamaica's uh, kind of segment where they've got all these Englanders are playing you got England and Jamaican but England based players playing for the Jamaican national team so that could continue a conversation for Jamaica if he chooses that but um Jamaica by the way is on the rise too with thanks to their English based players playing for them but I don't really see or none of the media outlets really say that he's considering Jamaica although they are on the list and Canada which I'm going to talk about even included him in this in the 60 men provisional roster for the 2019 gold cup and so he's already been recognized by the Canadian national team and John Herdman. So without further ado, before I read an article on him and from Sportsnet, by the way, um, I want to go check out what he is and we, let's learn about him through Wikipedia, a couple, couple snippets from him. And so Daniel Jepson or Daniel David Jepson is a professional footballer who plays as a forward for EPO Championship Club Sheffield United, born in Canada. Jepson has represented England at the youth international level. So a couple, before we go on, a couple things to take away from there. One, he is a striker, which Canada is really in demand for at the moment. As, I mean, I'm pretty sure Canada would like to have as many finishers as possible, many goal poachers as possible, as we saw in the last uh, World Cup qualifying cycle. Ike Ubo joined. He is a uh, striker. He just needs to develop more. But if Daniel Jepson chooses Canada, that adds to another striker's depth. Canada striker depth, as you say, and um, yeah, I mean more lethal finisher for Canada, and I mean I don't know, you can you can't say it's hard to say no to that. So you know, anytime you can get a lethal goal scorer, po goal poacher, goal poacher, I mean I'm pretty sure anybody's gonna love that. But you know, I would like to see it too. Is Canada's? I mean, we've been good, and like they've been really good, but through Jonathan David, Kyle Laren, and Alfonso Davies when he's healthy. But no, you can never ask for another. Um, you can never ask for any more scores or not enough scores, I should say. Anytime you can get as many scores as possible, more threats on the attacking after which Canada can probably get 
Maybe we can get a little more midfield and defensive, but reality, I think those look decent for now. But at the moment, I would like to see our striker depth improve as just in case there's injuries or people, there's drop-offs off the bench. Um, eventually, you get to a point where you can just pull out strikers that are quality, like Ike Ugo, when he eventually develops. And should Daniel Jepson choose Canada, um, you know, maybe you can pull out strikers like that who can just come on the pitch and score. Or you can start them, and there will be eventually to a point where there will be no drop-off, and they can eventually start. But, yeah, I think I mentioned he was born on uh, August 13, 2003, so he is young, very young. He's 18 years old. Um, Oakville, Ontario, so in the greater Toronto area here, um, next to Mississauga. So not far away from me, actually, after all. Um, he is six foot five or 1.95 meters tall. Um, he's a forward. And um, that's that segment. And then the final segment on Wikipedia is his international career. Let's talk about that, which I talked about with three nations which he's eligible for, but I'll say it again as well as the 60 men provisional roster. But born in Canada, Jepson is of Jamaican and English descent and moved to England in 2017. So he, he, he's lived a lot of his life here in Canada. So, I mean, he's lived in Canada longer than England or any other country. So. I mean, hey, but he's eligible to play for the senior national team for Canada, Jamaica, and England once that time comes to make his decision. Keep in mind that he's U19 right now, so I think you have to make a decision when he gets to U23 or after that. Or you can make it earlier, so we'll see what he chooses. Because some of the, you know, like, some some people, like, um, if you look at the U.S., for instance, they have an 18-year-old Giannis Musa who also was fighting between England and USA, and he made his decision at 18 or 17, so... He was young, so he, it's never really too early or too late to make a decision at his throat. We just, we just got to keep an eye on him. That's one guy we got to keep an eye on for. But um, as I said, he, um, he had, so he's eligible for Jamaica, Canada, and England. He de uh, debuted with the um, England under-18s in a friendly 2-0 win over the Wales under-18 team on March 29th, 2021. And on June 18th, Ju uh, Jepson was named to the, Can the Canadian 60 men provisional squad for the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup. Oh, I stand correct. I said 2019, but 2021, that's even better. I mean, that's more recent. And, um, yeah. Maybe I, so maybe when I read off the 60 name roster back when I did that video exactly almost a year ago, how did I miss this guy's name? I must have forgot, but for sure I read about him. But, um, nonetheless, we continue. On, on September 2nd, 2021, uh, so the same day that Canada was actually playing um, the U, no, they were playing Honduras at, for their first home opener for the CONCACAF World Cup qualifying cycle, Jepson made his de debut for the England U19 team during a 2-0 victory over Italy's under-19 team at St. George Park. He scored his first goal for the under-19s during a 1-1 draw with Germany and, sorry if I burnished this town name, and Bad Durim on September the 6th. And so so he has been getting a lot of playing time, it seems like, with quite a bit with England. However, um, it's, as I said, things, is still, things still happen. So although he is playing with England's um, under his youth teams, maybe he can make the shift to Canada. But then again, you have to see how much playing time and all that shakes out. But um, yeah, nonetheless, we just got to keep an eye on him, as I said, as... You know, getting, there's a lot of factors that's going to probably dictate whether he chooses for Canada or the Three Lions. With the Jamaica, is, I mean, I know they're in there, but as I said, they're really out of the picture. As I don't really think he's looking to, but looking to play for the reggae boys, but I, I, you don't know. I mean, it's playing time is obviously one of the main factors that can dictate which team he goes to, right? Jamaica has a lot of, I mean, you can play for Jamaica. I'm pretty sure you can get, like, that's, at this point, that's like England's B team. Because they have a lot of England-based players that play for Jamaica. But, I mean, that same time, Bobby Reed and um, a few others. I don't know why I'm forgetting them, but um, there's a lot. There's a lot of Jamaican players that are England-based that are playing there. And they're getting great playing time. So, this playing time is obviously a huge factor whether in Daniel Jefferson's decision. So, if you look at Jamaica, I mean, they do got a lot of England-based players. But at the same time... You're fighting against other fellow English-based players, so will you get playing time for Jamaica? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But for England, 
the competition is definitely fierce. So I'm pretty sure I don't unless, I don't, unless he's willing to ride the pine in big games or just any games or he, let alone be called up in general, then I don't know how much his future with England is going to be. So therefore, if, if he chooses Canada, I mean Canada, he's either even though Canada is still drawing in a lot of dual nationals, multi nationals. Um, Daniel Jepson playing time for Canada could actually be pretty good here. I mean, only strike. We look at the striker depth. I mean, the young striker depth. We got Ike Ubo who recently uh, joined for, as a dual national from England, I believe, as well as one of the other African nations he was eligible for. And then now you got if Daniel Jepson joins, I mean, that just as as to the striker depth. And as I said, you can really never ask for too many strikers if you're Canada and John Herdman, as you're always looking for goal poachers. So. Will he get playing time, though, for Canada? That's the big question for me. Um, you got Kyle Lahren, who right now is just explosive like a volcano. I mean, he went nuts in World Cup qualifying. He almost broke the record. Um, I think he was one goal off from breaking the record. But then again, he still racked up an enormous amount of goals that no one's ever seen on this Canadian national team's history in the history of World Cup qualifying, I believe. It's, that's huge. But nonetheless, he's going to be competing against Kyle Lahren. Um, what else? Who other Canadian strikers he's gonna be competing against? Um, you know he's gonna be competing against. Um, I know. Um, maybe you're gonna be swapping out because one guy's on his way out. Um, Lucas Cavallini he is kind of getting there to that point where he's probably gonna retire from the national team at any moment. Lucas Cavallini from the Vancouver Whitecaps. He gets caught up here and there, but he's just he's okay. But given compared to his young talent, as it's always gonna happen. We got young versus old. The young people, the young talents, could gonna typically shine more, and so, yeah. No offense to um, Lucas Cavallini, but he might be on the way out soon, especially if Canada keeps reeling in young talent. And if they win, Daniel Jepson, um, that just that makes even more case for the passing of the torch from Lucas Cavallini. But nonetheless, Canada will definitely need some more strikers. As I mean, hey, you can never say no to that. And if I'm John Herdman, I would be trying my best, which I think he is try and wheel the striker in for Canada and so we'll see but um, before be the only thing I want to talk about now is the article and so that's this one's from Sportsnets and this is when I talk about them they were getting they were trying to give him as much press as possible and we're gonna learn more about him and just how he plays and potentially what this could mean for Canada if they had if for if they add him if I can say that right if they add him to the Canadian roster permanently so, the article, Canadians Abroad Roundup, is Daniel Jepson Canada's next rising star? So, already a title that raises a lot of eyebrows, right? You know, because a lot of people probably haven't heard of Daniel Jepson, but at the same time, you know, if he chooses Canada, this could be humongous. So, with here, if I can bring up the article, we've got, I don't know why it just glitched, but there we go, it's back. So, nonetheless, I'm going to... Anyway, I'm going to start reading and let's see if I can do a lot better than what I have recently, recently doing. Every time I try and read articles like this, as I typically always butcher them and misspell or mix a word. So let's see if I can do a lot better, especially now that I have a lot more time. There's no more exams or any conflicts. So I can take my time on this and just we can read through this together and learn about him. So a young Canadian striker continues to improve, impress in Europe already. Um, saying, you know, our stake is already putting a claim on him, Stapleton saying, Canadian, right? So he says, no, it is not Jonathan David, as magnificent as he's been. This is in reference to Daniel Jepson. Now, who is Daniel Jepson? So they say, some Canadian soccer hard hardcores are aware of Jepson, but the Oakville, Ontario native is one of a handful of notable dual nationals who've yet to commit to the men's national team. The 18-year-old made headlines earlier this year when he scored his first Premier League goal for Sheffield United against Edmonton. Everton. So he's already making a shockwaves, it seems like, in the Premier League. And if he keeps it up, Canada will just have to keep pressing him. This followed a scintillating return to form with Sheffield United's developmental team as a 17-year-old, with Jepson scoring a goal every other game on average. The club is facing relegation to the uh, championship, and his former coach Paul, if I'm saying this, if I'm saying this wrong, sorry, Hacking Bottom is in charge as caretaking manager. The youngster earned a run of games in the English top flight division. As United prepared for life in the second division, 
The club felt that Jefferson would be better served spending a year on loan rather than riding the bench in the championship. So third tier side, Burton Albion loaned him for the season. So either way, he's still getting, no matter what team he's playing for, he's still getting experience at the top level in Europe, which is I always, I've always emphasized. That's the best place to be. Europe is where all the talent is, the cradle of football. And for, for unless, you know, for further notice, it will always be. So keep him in Europe, keep getting him developed, and that's what you want to see. When I first watched Jefferson with Sheffield United's under-23s, the potential was clear. He's tall, quick, works hard off the ball, and executed good runs off the ball as well. His two big issues were anticipation in the box, which prevented him from scoring even more goals, and a lack of strength, which, as they said, it's going to come with time. That He's still young. He's only 18 years old, and he's only going to get stronger as he continues to develop. Having, er, having earned nearly 1,000 minutes for Burton in all competitions this season, Jefferson has six goals, including four in his last three starts already, that's good, and is among the league's leaders in expected goals per 90 minutes per opta. So already, four goals in six games, I mean, yeah, four goals in six games if I'm reading that stat right. Um, no, six goals in his last four starts. So, yeah, I mean... He's already making a statement in scoring. He's already showing that he can score if you start him. So, you know, that, that's what you want to see. You know, you want to basically you want him to prove to you that he can play and he is going to develop and only continue to get better as time goes on. Developing further into Jepsen's underlying numbers, it is apparent that he is growing into his own as a finisher when he is lining his uh, statistical radar, which there's a map here of where he is and basically where he plays. Having ex-Premier League and Dutch international striker Jimmy Floyd, um, sorry if I'm saying this wrong, um, Hasabanek, whew, I know I butchered that, has been a huge benefit for Jepsen. He's more assured when he executes his off-the-ball runs and doesn't hesitate when the ball arrives at his feet, as seen in the clips below from last Tuesday's game against Accrington Stanley, which I think there was a video here. Well, we're about to get to it. Yeah, here it is. But the performance carried into Sunday's win over Doncaster as he scored a tremendous back heel and could have finished the match with a hat trick. So, wow. And here you can just see a goal. It, it won't show up on the video on the screen, but there's a video that Sportsnet included here where it shows a ball pouncing around from the corner kick and Daniel Jefferson just plows it home past the keeper. It's a, it's a pretty good goal, if I got to say. Jefferson has developed more when engaging in individual duels and remains a hard worker off the ball as well aided by his long strides. If he continue, if he keeps improving his touch and vision, which can be viewed in the video above, which you saw with that beautiful touch and that beautiful strike onto the goal, the Oakville Ontario native could be a striker in the mold of Alexander Asak. The Swedish international joined Borussia Dortmund as a teenager teenager before settling into Real Sociedad in, Le in La Liga. Uh, like Jepsen, As Isak is tall, quick, an lethal finisher, scoring 17 goals in the last 34 games last season. The form exhibited by Jepsen has led to a report that the Sheffield United player will consider recalling him from his loan this January. However, that means Jepsen has two experienced strikers in Billy Sharp and David McGoldrick to Urship. Competition is good, but the primary season for Jepsen's form is down to regular minutes in League One, where many players started their careers. Returning to the championship to ride the pine wouldn't be conducive to a, uh, to a positive trajectory. If Heckingbottom is still the caretaker manager, then Jepsen could, could earn opportunities. If he doesn't, he'll need to still fight for a spot in his place. If he does and wins the spot, then fair play to Jepsen. But the club should seriously weigh the pros and cons, especially if he's potentially good enough to play in the second tier division. As for his national team future, Jepsen has been capped by England's U19 in the official competition, which means that he will need to file a one-time switch of nationality to represent his native country. If he does, he will join the likes of Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, Tejan Buchanan, and even Kyle Lahren as Canada's next rising star. So, with that article, I mean, that pretty much sums up and we've learned a lot about him. We know he's a leader scorer. We know that 
I mean, he's only on the rise, and he's already tearing up the second division, and he is getting quality to playing time in Europe, over a thousand minutes already. And despite already being capped tied with England's U19 team, he will have to file a one-time switch in order to play for that Hoosh. But not a big deal. It's just as long as John Herdman in Canada continues to keep pressing him and trying to convince him that you will see quality playing time in Canada, and you can you'll fit right in with the pieces of Tejon Buchanan, Alfonso Davies, Kyle Laren, um, Jonathan David, uh, Jonathan Osorio. You know the list goes on. He can fit you too. If I'm John Herdman, keep convincing this kid that he will get playing time as he continues to develop with the Canadian national team, um, and just keep trying to win him over England. As I'm pretty sure England's gonna be trying to lock him down as well. But Show this guy that, you know, he can play for us and he can really contribute if he has a lot. So, nonetheless, that pretty much does it for Daniel Jepson. And we just have to keep an eye out and see what he plays for and what team he chooses in the near future. But, nonetheless, um, video, I hope you liked the video requested by BCR. Then again, great, you know, great video request. And on that note, if you have a lot, if you have videos that relate to dual national or anything related to the Canadian national team that you would like me to talk about, and especially during down times like this where there's no um, there's no national team games from either the men's or the women's, I would happy to be able to do that. So um, send them in if you have any other dual nationals that are being currently spotted worldwide for Canadian national team. So with that, make sure you, um, you know, if you, if you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about it. Make sure you hit the bell notification that we know when your video was posted. And without that, tell all your friends. Could Daniel Jepson choose the Three Lions or will he choose LaHouche?